Was this a dog man or something else? What keeps them away or deters them? A year ago was when the first encounter happened. It was just me and my grandma home. We live in city limits inside of a small town. My mother and father went out hunting that night. I was in my room listening to music and on my phone. At 11 AM someone started knocking on our front door. Super weird as we hardly ever have anyone come by after 9 PM. My grandma was the first one to the door and when she went to check there is no one and she opened the door for both of us to check. No one, we were a bit confused and figured it was some kids playing around. 1 AM comes around fairly quickly, I was in my chair and had a headset on. I kept hearing something scratching something, I'd taken my headset off to pause and listen and it happened again. It was scratching the outside wall of my room, I was a bit worried to look out the window so I didn't rush to check. But I had my phone ready and 911 dialed in before I felt comfortable to flash a light outside my window. I seen nothing no prints or obvious signs of anything. Soon as I closed my blinds and sat back I heard something run on the roof right above my room into the front of the house and back down above my room then ran off the front of the house. I was stunned and fight or flight was taking over I reacted by top locking the doors and moving whatever furniture by the door. My dad left his .308 in his room so I grabbed that and posted up in my grandma's room with her until my parents came back. Whatever it was that ran on the roof had to be huge. We had roofers on our roof before and even they didn't step or move on the roof that loud and heavily. But whatever was running on the roof had to be heavy or powerful enough to hear and feel in the house. 2.30 AM my parents came back they pulled in the driveway and I helped them inside then moved everything back while I was telling them what happened. My mother didn't want to talk at first, while my dad looked pale and shaken up when I mentioned the scratching outside. We sat down and my mother spoke up that they were driving past the hydropower lines and there was a large wolf-like creature darted past them and went behind a large rock. They thought they clipped the creature and may have to help put it down, but soon as they stopped the truck and father got his gun out. The wolf looked out from the rock and snarled back at them. It didn't look the same this time it was evil to look at and it was standing up this time staring down my dad. My dad squeezed off a shot and hit it in the chest. It crashed behind the rock but after that my dad worried for my mother and him he decided against seeing if it was finished. Got back in the truck and held down the gas all the way back to town until he got back home. What's weirded me out the most is whatever it is it's resurfaced around town recently and people finding large wolf-like prints in their yards and a neighbor said something was standing and looking through their living room window a month ago. French Werewolf. Ten years ago in a little town outside of Toulouse, France, right after dark, waiting for a restaurant to open. Our big group of family, Americans, took a walk up a hill to look at the town graveyard from the road. Walking back, we could see the whole town below us, the road ahead lined with stone walls in front of houses. About 100 yards ahead, illuminated by the streetlight, I see a huge black dog shaped thing leave our sidewalk, lope into the middle of the street, rise up on its hind legs and quickly scale and disappear over the 8 foot stone wall opposite. There were cars and bushes and gates to use for visual scale and this thing was tall, like 7 to 8 feet. Picture the werewolf from the film Prisoner of Azkaban, yep, spot on. My family was chattering away about whatever, but I said, did you guys see that? And my son says, oh yeah, that was a werewolf. We walked by the spot a minute later and everyone was laughing at us, but screw that. I don't care if you believe me or not was the serious, straightforward introduction I was given to a possible wolfman sighting in the autumn of 2013. It was at this point that my longtime friend Andrew told me of not just one encounter, but two separate encounters with more than one strange, bipedal creatures out hunting game near Norton, Ohio. Andrew normally works night shifts, which means traveling quiet, darkened roads is an everyday occurrence for him. One cold autumn night in particular, while traveling down Johnson Road bordering Silver Creek Metro Park, what he saw was anything but routine. 
approximately 50 yards from the intersection with Medina Line Road, he stopped his car when two deer raced across the road heading south. But what caught his attention was what they were running from. I would place them somewhere between six apostrophe six and seven tall. They chased the two deer, which were both smaller, by the way, out across the street and into the woods. They ran, in formation, one in front, two behind, kind of next to each other. They were roughly 30 to 40 yards behind the deer. They were bipedal, very muscular, and fast. Lightning fast. It all happened in just a few seconds. I couldn't describe any features, unfortunately, I'm assuming it was either a new moon or cloudy because it was very dark, but they were definitely a dark color. Maybe a chocolate brown or a black color. I pressed him for any more detail. After all, there have been Bigfoot sightings in Ohio. They say that Bigfoot has long arms that swing when it runs, and it runs like a human. Whatever these were, they weren't Bigfoot. I can't describe how they moved, but they didn't move like a person. Less than a month later, Andrew was heading home on Johnson Road. As he passed a moonlit cornfield, something ran in front of his car. The fields had full-grown corn stalks, but I don't know exact heights only that the corn stalks were taller than me by a head and I'm six feet tall. This time, my sighting of two creatures, was a quick flash because there was no open land to it. They basically leapt the road as they broke the corn and landed about 10 to 15 feet into the field on the other side and kept running. This time, the pair that I saw in the moonlight, the first was black and the second was black with white or silver on its chest and back. Since the first three I saw were all a solid color, that means there must be at least four different creatures. On October 11, 2014, I set out with Andrew and his wife to see what we could find in the way of evidence that whatever he saw might still be around. The location of the first sighting is bordered to the south by Silver Creek Metro Park. On the other side of the road, there are three or four houses with a large field behind them. As Andrew pointed out, the creatures pass through the field and pass the houses on the night he saw them meaning these creatures must not have much fear of being near human habitation. The second sighting was on a slight hill between two large fields in a rather remote area. Not only were both places quite close to each other, they are both in close proximity to Silver Creek. We had planned an investigation of Silver Creek Metro Park, arriving at dusk, but the reservoir lake and surrounding park was alive with bonfires and hundreds of people celebrating the second annual fall family outing making any chance of searching for wolfman like creatures too difficult. A follow-up trip is still slated for, hopefully, this winter. Other witnesses may exist, but their reluctance to go public is understandable. If you saw large dark creatures running on two feet, you too might think people would call you crazy. But there is an earlier account worth mentioning here which may give more credence to these sightings. In Linda Godfrey's book Real Wolf Men, there's a 2010 story titled The Persistent Chicken Thief, p. 262-7, about a family put in contact with Godfrey after several incidents on their farm. Their son Drew was one witness to a large, dark creature over six feet tall lurking in the tree line in March. The lone rooster began to squawk and the creature let out a fierce growl, then all went silent. Drew heard what sounded like something jumping back over the fence, and the rooster squealed as if in pain. At that point, Drew grabbed a gun and flashlight and ran outside, searching the fence from the front porch with his light. He saw the rooster but it appeared to have something dark over its middle. It slowly dawned on Drew that the something dark was the muzzle of a creature with two glaring eyes. Whatever it was, he said, it seemed to look through me. It turned my blood cold and I was paralyzed with fear. I'm a hunter. I'm used to being in the wilderness and encountering bigger animals. Those animals don't scare me like this thing did. When I encountered this thing the first time, I got the feeling that it wanted to hurt me. After researching something I've never believed in, I'm convinced that this thing is a dogman. Loud howls and the sound of something walking on two legs in the gravel driveway plagued the family for many months. 
The family kept a detailed diary of their strange events, but unfortunately Godfrey has since lost contact with them. While the exact location of the farm is not known, it is in the vicinity of Norton, Ohio. In May 2010, Kristen Miller of Wadsworth reported seeing a large cat with a long tail resembling a mountain lion at dusk in Silver Creek Metro Park and reported it to park officials. There have also been reports of black bears in the area, though neither of these creatures can run on two feet, nor do they come close to being nine to seven feet tall. Silver Creek is a tributary for the aptly named Wolf Creek. Long ago, timber wolves were common across Ohio, though as farming developed among early settlers, these furry canines became less of an accepted part of the wilderness and more of a nuisance as the animals hunted and killed many sheep. Thousands of Ohio wolves were hunted, trapped, and poisoned in an effort to eradicate them from the area. 1842 marked the final killing of a wolf in Ohio and the end of the wolf's presence here. While wolves have been driven from Ohio, perhaps something far more frightening has replaced them. The mystery of the Silver Creek Wolfmen is far from solved. At this time, I consider my investigation ongoing. Anyone who has witnessed anything similar or discovered any possible evidence of these creatures can contact me directly at kennethufortedmag.com. When I was six years old and attending my primary school in South Africa, where there was this sort of alley between the main building and a retaining wall that had a storage room at the end of it, with a bunch of desks and chairs stacked in front of the doors, presumably because the desks and chairs were in the process of being moved in or out, a friend and I saw what I believed to have been a dog man. We were playing near the entrance of the alley in the early morning before school began when one of us noticed movement coming from behind the stacked desks. We both looked and saw a creature that had the head of a black dog slash wolf and the body of a man with glowing green eyes. It watched us from behind the desks, moving up and down from all fours to its hind legs, alternating between completely hiding itself from our sight and peeking up at us from the gaps in the desks. Me and the other child stood there frozen for a few minutes watching this creature watch us from the end of the alley before one of us snapped out of it and pulled the other away leading us both to run away. The other child and myself later told other people, but no one seemed to believe us. I have never seen this creature, or anything like it again. There is a part of me that believes that this is nothing more than a false memory that I managed to convince myself was real, since I tend to be a bit skeptic and the events I just described seem impossible but there remains a part of me that cannot understand why the memory feels so real that I cannot differentiate it from other childhood memories that I know for a fact happened. So I just moved to a gated community, near a lake, I was kind of getting used to see the moon above the lake on a little sort of communal patio. The light was busted but the moonlight was enough for it to not feel dark. I get near and saw a mixture of person bending like a dog, I toot it was just some nagborg I didn't know yet, so I let him know I'm there. Hey there neighborg, I'm just moved niche door, just came to Sarah the moon I was just gonna leave because, I didn't want to disturb anybody. Then the neighbor got up in two feet, to start, it was towel, the arms were easily hanging all the way to his knees. I found that odd, but the kicker was when he turned around. Dear Lord, the face was dog-like, big thief, pointy ears and a scary smirk that I will never forget, the skin was covered in fur but you could sear some skin. I didn't know how to react so I just stood there until I heard my partner coming. I ran to her and told her, you gotta sear this. And less than five seconds that took my so to turn her eyes to the lake, the thing was gone never to be seen agging. I'll begin by saying I have no clue if this was a dogman proper, but after partaking in some of Linda Godfrey's research and rekindling my childhood interest in werewolves I thought there were some odd synchronicities. Me and my brother used to go to this somewhat secluded mountain creek in southwest Virginia before life and responsibilities got in the way. 
It backs up on Jefferson National Forest and judging by Google Earth it's a pretty secluded area. The road up to it ends abruptly but turned into a long overgrown and degraded road along the creek that we had discovered led to a very scenic boulder strewn swimming hole that we would hang out at and have a few drinks and smokes. To get there you had to go past an obviously long abandoned coal mine with tall piles of mine rubble. One day we were surprised when a huge wolf-sized mangy German shepherd looking dog slid down from the mine and daintily made his way to us with a big smile. We were hesitant they had rabies but they seemed aware and sort of greeted as before just sort of following us to our spot. We thought it was odd a stray would be in the middle of the woods but we sort of laughed it off and let him chill out with us at our spot while he fished and we sipped on beer. The next few times we went out there there he would be there, sliding down the coal slough to hang out so we dubbed him our buddy Mr. Croy from a family name we had noticed at a derelict cemetery nearby. We became more comfortable with each other so he'd just sit by while we sat and chilled on the boulders. Our only issue was that he smelled terrible, like rotting sulfur but he was our buddy so we just let it slide. We also noted he seemed strangely human in mannerism, especially his eyes, thus Mr. Croy became a family enigma we would joke about being our drinking buddy. We even tried to get him to come home with us but he would never go past this grove of huge dead hemlock trees. Come next spring we decided to head out there to see our coal mine friend but he was nowhere to be found, at least seen. He had a heavy gait and you could hear his distinct thump as something followed us and we both looked at each other as nothing was there. Copping it off as nothing and sat our buddy was gone we continued to our spot but we were still obviously followed by heavy footsteps. We sat at our spot talking and sipping on beer when we got the distinct rotten egg smell we associated with him. At that point we were getting weird vibes and somewhat spooked it back to the car. We never really went there after that as life got in the way and he started dating and I started working. We tried to go back a few years ago but there was like some sort of white supremacist encampment at the entrance that made us too uncomfortable to venture further. We still talk about it to this day when it comes up, our mysterious wilderness dog friend. This encounter happened in May 1989. We went on a school trip visiting the ruins of an old Sandinistas outpost that was politically historic, located by the town called Granada in Nicaragua. We were 27 kids all together, and had special permission from our parents to go there. I happened to notice that there were houses by the place where the historical site was. They were on the hills of a mountain, where I stupidly had gone to investigate. The houses were old and made of wood. They were about 60 yards from the historical site. As I came by the first house an elderly man came and asked me why I wasn't with my group. I told him, why do you care? He responded in an angry tone, because there are things out here that will take you. Our country is wild but only if you travel in the mountains, rivers, lakes or by the sea, so I paid no mind to his warning. It was around 5.30 p.m. and I was about 100 yards from the historical site. As soon as the teacher blew her whistle we were to regroup at the bus in order to leave. I was sitting next to the tree line eating a sandwich, when behind me I heard a distinct noise. It was a growling sound that literally shook all of my nerves. I immediately turned back to see if anything was coming my way. Suddenly I heard the teacher's whistle. I figured I had a good two or three minutes to get up the tree and see if I could spot anything so I did. What I saw crawling on the forest floor did not make any sense at all. It was a man lying on the ground, about 80 or 100 feet in the wood line. His body was jerking as if in extreme pain. I saw that his back looked sweaty, and as he jerked he turned his face towards me and I could see his eyes were red and his nose was literally turning black and elongated. I quickly climbed down the tree, grabbed my backpack and left, running to the bus. Apparently I was the last to return. As the bus started to drive off I said a prayer to protect me from this monster that roams the land. I asked my grandpa the next day about this things that I had seen. He grew up there and was a native from our country, 
and his dad had been a coffee farmer which is one of the things my country still trades to the US. He explained that the locals had a curfew and that they never went out unarmed to pick the coffee because of these things. They had suspected they were both animals and humans, and practiced devil worshipping, and traded their souls in order to shape shift into many animal forms, such as the great wolf spirit. I have to tell you that when we made our life in the US I had thought I had left the monsters behind me, but as it turns out I was wrong. I am in Austin TX, and have been here since 1996. I encourage people I know to not go out into the woods alone, and do not wear bright colors. At least go armed with a gun or a bear pepper spray, because I do believe I was lucky, but I will not tempt fate again. This will sound crazy. I live in this really small town in Eastern Oregon, and I don't think there has ever been a sighting of a dog man in my neck of the woods. Tons of Bigfoot sightings, but not this beast. The reason why I title this as crazy is because I was high when I saw this thing, and a lot of people think you see stuff high, and that's a yes and no. With me it is medicinal and it helps with glaucoma, headaches, and depression. I put that there because maybe I did make it up in my head, but holy yes am I still scared hours after it occurred. Last night I finished writing a couple of papers for my college courses, and as I finished up the I could feel that the hairs on the back of my neck start standing up. I turned to my window where the blinds are down but not folded, like I could see somewhat through them. I could have sworn something moved to the left side of my house where the corner of my room is. I figured it was an owl or something so I didn't freak myself out. I close the blinds and I head into the kitchen to grab something to drink. In my house the only light you can get at night is by the outdoor lighthouse that acts like a floodlight to an extent, and the other source would be Christmas lights and moonlight. I didn't want to turn anything on so I didn't want to wake up any of my folks, so I had everything off. While I was grabbing a drink of water at the sink faucet, I looked outside and there was this thing standing behind our Christmas tree. I know it was a thing and not a person because it was almost as tall as the tree and that's a good 6 to 7 feet tall or about a meter I think. I froze, I could see these two greenish yellow ones yes that reminded me of my dog whenever you'd shine a light on them. That thing made my skin crawl, I wanted to scream and shout and get this creature away from my house. The eyes blinked a couple of times but just stared me down, I couldn't make a good look at its face. But I tried to turn on the kitchen light and I couldn't even make out what I was seeing, until I walked to the sliding screen door that connects to the living room. That thing must have been staring at me or something because I walked over there to see if the light reflected something, and I got way more than I bargained for. I saw the lanky legs, a very skinny body, and the last thing I could make out was the snout. I haven't heard any Bigfoot around here with a long snout. I tried to get some pictures, but it was too dark to really pick up anything, even with light coming from the kitchen to reflect on it. My phone could make out a vague shape, but you could confuse that easily with the tree. I tried to use the flash but no good, I think that's how I scared it off or something. After a minute, maybe less of it staring me down in the living room, it turned around and hunkered down on all fours and ran towards an open field. I didn't dare to step outside. But in the bathroom where we have this tiny window cracked open, I could hear a bunch of cows and a few horses go nuts. I'm used to hearing coyote noises whenever the local horses neigh or the cows get in an uproar, but not this time. They were freaking out what seemed to be over nothing. I haven't heard cows or horses be that upset when it's this close to winter. I want to debunk this as a prank from one of my friends did, but the only friend I have over here lives a few streets down from me and he's have to wait at that tree until about 2 in the morning just to see if I got up to use the bathroom or get a drink. There was a video on this subreddit of a dog man looking through a screen window, and those eyes matched that of this creature. I joined last night out of the blue because I always found this thing interesting before I saw it myself. That thing is creepy, and I do not want that thing prowling around whenever I'm up late. So yeah, that's my encounter last night. Again this was in eastern Oregon and I have never heard of a dog man in this part of the state. Hopefully it was a one-time thing, 
If not, stay strapped or get clapped. I live in northern Indiana in the country and me and my brother and his friend went camping up there into some deep woods near a lake, I couldn't sleep, but they were sleeping, so I was up tending to the fire, walking around the campsite, and I heard something, like a howl, and coyotes are very common around here, I have a lot of experience with them like how they act and sound and everything because of how abundant they are, and I heard a howl that was definitely not a coyote or a dog, it was really deep. The only thing it could have been is a wolf, but we don't have wolves up here, I have a sneaky suspicion that I may have been close. To the dog man. Skunk ape sighting my dad told me about. This story takes place in the late 90s slash early 2000s. My dad was in the Navy, and at the time of this story he was on leave, visiting home. This incident took place in rural Pennsylvania, in the Allegheny National Forest. I don't know if this has any significance, but our town has a huge native history with a reservation just north of us. My dad was seeing an old friend from high school, and they were driving along one of the very empty roads surrounded by woods in our area. The road was dug into a giant and very steep hill, covered in huge towering evergreen trees. As they were driving, Suddenly a small black figure launches 40 feet from the upslant of the hillside and lands on the pavement right in front of the car. They hadn't stopped yet, and they're just about to hit the figure's dead corpse. Until right when they're about to hit it, and it springs up and jumps over the guard rail, and down the hillside. Apparently, they both saw it, but didn't know. So they both sat in silence, not wanting to look crazy. Until my dad's friend says dude. Was that a monkey? My dad says I don't know. I thought I was just seeing stuff. My dad said that all he saw was that it looked like a chimp, except its fur was much longer and rattier. It hung down from its arms, and it was matted and wet. He didn't get a glimpse of anything else. A few years later, when the internet came along, he found out about the skunk ape. He maintains to this day that he thinks it was a skunk ape. Any ideas? I am an enthusiast about werewolf, it all started when I saw one in front of me, he followed me on a trail, but I narrowly escaped, and it wasn't in Achibaya, it was in another city. In Achibaya, state of Sao Paulo, there are one or more packs of werewolves, causing terror in the population. There are cases and reports on YouTube, even one that somehow mentions an ex-communist president he found a few years ago turning into a beast. I found it interesting to bring this information, in Achibaya the situation is no good. There is a neighborhood in particular that nobody goes out on the street at night, the neighborhood with the name Tank, or Neighborhood of the Tank. If you want links to videos in Portuguese I can share them here. There are a few notabale sightings in NY state within 30 to 40 minutes of the NJ border. What most people don't know is the northern tip of NJ has tons of mountain wilderness too. I hunt Sussex County NJ all the time and although I have never seen anything but one time scouting in the early fall I had a weird experience. I run into bear 75% of the time I go into the woods and know how to handle myself, and they don't scare me. But I was scouting four years ago, prior to my knowledge of Dogman, my buddy and I found this square boulder. The top was perfectly flat. I've never seen a natural rock shape like that before, almost like an altar. Just over the next ridge I found this raised plateau unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's very hilly up there but this section of woods was dead flat and in the middle of it was a giant knoll about 20 feet tall 10 feet wide and maybe 10 feet long. I climbed up top to check out what the shooting lanes could look like. While up there I got this crazy feeling of paranoia. I'd counter describe it but I felt like I was being stalked. At the time not knowing about dogmen I started thinking there must be a bear in the area but I could not shake the paranoia I felt. 
It continued to get worse and worse to the point I started sweating bullets. I felt like a bear was going to pop out and attack me at any moment. This makes no sense as I am not afraid of bears and have had literally hundreds of bear encounters in the woods. I didn't shake that feeling until we hiked almost a mile away. Turns out that whole valley we were in was a main vein that used to be patrolled by a prominent Indian tribe. Something tells me what we found was a ceremonial area. No hard evidence to support that but just a gut feeling. Such a unique mound in the middle of nowhere. No chance it was man-made at least in modern Timea. I still think about that feeling to this day. Never saw or heard anything but I have never had that type of paranoia of feeling like a prey any time in NY life. Have not gone back to that spot since. And that mound we found would have made an amazing natural hunting blind. I'm in quasi-rural S Jersey too. My friend on the next block growing up swears he and another friend saw some cryptid in the corner of his yard just in off the woods with abnormally long skinny arms. It was watching them play intently. They both took off into the house. Fun side note, the house was also apparently very haunted so it was a damned if you do damned if you don't type deal. Possible dog man or other cryptid sighting. Okay so I know technically Therese no cryptids in Michigan. Like what I saw besides the dog man which supposedly isn't near me. But the other night around 3 am I was walking down the road and I saw this herd of deer running across the road. And then right behind them this thing came out of the woods and it was big like deer size. But its head wasn't on its neck it was on its shoulders and it was way too big to be a coyote or a dog. It ran under a light and I could see it was colored dark black. Like its skin was black and I say skin because this creature looked almost leathery. Not anything like it was furry. It also cleared the main road in about two steps just boom boom gone. We have no beers, no moose, no wolves, no buffalo, nothing that looks like this. And I know 100% this was not a deer. Any ideas? My good friend had an encounter a number of years ago. Him and his buddy were driving near Carlsbad, New Mexico when they saw a dog eating roadkill on the side of the road. They stopped maybe 20 to 30 feet after they passed it so my friend could get out and get a better look. When he started walking closer the dog got up on two legs and started walking towards him so he got back in the car and his friend saw it too and was yelling go mother effer, go. They took off and didn't see it again. He said it was standing near a sign and its head reached to the top of it. He went back the next day and measured where it reached on the sign and said it was 9 feet tall. He said it looked really similar to the werewolf from the movie The Howling. I known him for over 10 years and he's never lied to me or been one to make things up. Before he told me about his encounter I didn't believe something like that existed. My recent encounter. Today I had a very creepy experience on my way to work in the morning. I normally don't believe in supernatural stuff, but I'll be damned if that was just a normal animal. On my way to work I often use a small road through a densely wooded area. It is a pretty long and pretty straight road. I left home at around 4.30 am and was driving, minding my business and slowly waking up completely, when I suddenly noticed, what I thought was a very large dark grey or black dog sitting next to the road. As it was still dark, I couldn't make it out in full detail, so I slowed down, in case it started to run across the road but when I got closer and the headlights captured it in full. It just stood up and calmly retreated into the bushes next to the road. But as soon as it stood up, it was very clear that this was no normal dog. It was huge. Bear size at least or even bigger, I'd say. Shorter hind legs, very muscular front, a weirdly long snout and pointy ears, and a bushy tail. 
It walked almost like some sort of hyena, but always on all fours. Big predators are very rare in this area and if there is a sighting about every two years or so, it is only some lone wolves or very very rarely a bear wandering through. This stretch of road has always given me the creeps, but now the fear has a face. One thing I had noticed the last days was that there were no other animals around. Normally there are always some deer, some foxes or, if I get lucky, even a badger around. But this week? None. Not even a bird. There had also been some reports of missing livestock in this area. Two sheep went missing the last week and yesterday a horse was lost. It was later found, brutally ripped apart and partially consumed. I don't know if the unknown canine creature is responsible for this, but I highly suspect it. It happened in the summer of 2015. My then girlfriend and me had been enjoying the summer, had a few days off of work and on our last night of our vacation, we wanted to go and enjoy a romantic night at a location about 20 miles away from our hometown. It is a pretty valley with a very clear and cold river, various small islands are located in the stream with a bit of brush and some small trees on them. The river is shallow enough to wade through it. It isn't well known amongst tourists, so it is great for some NSFW activities. We love to go skinny dipping there. Well, that's what we had planned. Sadly, it went a bit different than we wanted. The first half of the night went pretty good actually. We found a nice spot, set up a small camp, laid some blankets out, put up some candles and went skinny dipping and stuff. We got tired, decided to call it a night and wrapped us up in the blankets. That's when it started. All the while we were there, there were always some animals around and we heard them. Deer calls, a fox, owls. Just the typical noises of the night. Until they stopped. Nothing. Just the murmur of the river running over the rocks. That's when we heard it for the first time. It was a howl. But no wolf. It was deep, growling, earth shakening and it felt like it rattled every bone in my body. It was just terrifying. My girlfriend was as shaken as I was. I have been outdoors all my childhood. I grew up on my parents' farm and in the woods around it, so I know every animal roaming around in them. I know the deer calls, I know what the fox says and I know the howl of wolves and I know the roar of bears. But this? No. I never heard anything like it. And I never want to hear something like it again. We suddenly decided that my bed at home is a better location to sleep than this river bed. We got up, packed our stuff and started to head out. That's when we heard it the second time. The same howl, deep, rumbling, shaking, followed by a deep growl. Whatever it was that made this noise, it was big. And we didn't want to meet it. Unfortunately it was still about two miles to my car. We had to cross the river two times to get to the river bank where the trail through the woods to my car started. When we crossed it, we thought we saw and heard something crossing the river with us. I had a small flashlight with me and when we arrived on the river bank I shone it back. What we saw, made our knees get weak. A huge animal was standing on the opposite river bank. Dark fur, pointy ears, very muscular body shape, and a head almost like a German shepherd, but the most fear-inducing was its eyes. Orange slash yellow glowing eyes, seemingly fixed on us. We booked it. We ran all the way back to my car. We could hear it charging through the river, but it must have stopped at the bank, as we didn't hear it anymore after we entered the woods. We made it back to our car safely and we decided to never go there again. At least not at night, but in fact I haven't gone there again since then. Dog Man in Scotland? My uncle used to live in quite a remote part of Scotland. He's not the sort of person to make up stories or scare easily. I don't have a lot of detail about it at all and I can't ask him so this is the best I can do. He was driving along a deserted country road after dark in autumn slash winter. 
While he was driving he suddenly saw a huge black dog looking thing that didn't look natural at all by the side of the road. We don't have wolves in this country and it wasn't a normal dog. This thing was big. Could it possibly be something like a dog man? Werewolf encounter in Pullman, Washington. I didn't know this forum existed until recently, but after spending some time here reading similar stories, I've decided to share my humanoid encounter to add it to the record of people who have had these kinds of experiences. As I have not spent much time researching this sort of thing, I do not know how to classify the being I encountered, and I would appreciate any suggestions as to its identity. I will tell the story in as much detail as possible for our collective record, but I will warn you ahead of time, it is relatively mundane and basically begins and ends with me seeing the shadowy figure of a wolfman-like entity and going out of my way to avoid it. The encounter occurred on February 2, 2016 at around 5 to 8 p.m. in Pullman, Washington. I was living in Pullman working and completing graduate degrees at Washington State University. I know the exact date because I have a habit slash hobby of writing bad poetry, and so when some phrase pops into my head that I want to write down, I jot it in the notes on my phone. That day, I wrote, and this is true, I'm afraid to walk alone afraid I'll meet the devil on the road. Until writing this, I had honestly forgotten about this strange detail of the story which in retrospect is probably the least explainable aspect as it implies the encounter was somehow more than coincidental. Pullman is a small college town that is extremely walkable. For anyone who may be reading this familiar with the area, I commuted on foot daily from Lamont Street on Military Hill, down the walking slash biking path, and up College Hill via Stadium Way, mostly, to campus. So, I would walk down a hill, through a valley on a bike path, and up a well-lit hill into a college campus, taking about 45 minutes. Some other relevant details about Pullman are that it's extremely isolated, surrounded by rolling wheat fields to an extreme degree of deforestation, basic solely populated by local townies and undergraduates, the sun goes down famously early in any season but summer, drunk undergraduates are common but very uncommon far from College Hill, where the encounter took place, it's not enough of a town to have a homeless population, and drifters are few and far between. To the point, I walked home that evening in the dark as I had hundreds of times. Upon reaching nearly the base of the street that I lived on, where the bike path would lead up to the nearby road, Grand Avenue, I saw the form of a humanoid crouched in the path ahead. While the road is somewhat lit, the bike path is down a small berm from the road and is very poorly lit in this spot. From about 60 feet out, I began to feel afraid, as I could not make out much about the form. About 30 to 40 feet from the crouched form, I stopped. I think if the figure was wearing clothing or had human skin of any shade, it would have caught more light. Instead, it looked too large to be human, its back too curved, its head too far forward and though I saw no evidence of fur, the context suggested to me very heavily that it was fur-covered. My inner dialogue ran through the options, and nothing made sense. If it was human, it was a very tall man crouched over as if balling himself up on the road, back deeply arched over. If it was not, it was humanoid and something people do not generally believe exists. Those are really the only two options. I began to have a fight or flight response. I said hey. At a moderate volume something like two or three times. The form moved. It looked like it was turning its head toward or away from me. I never saw eyes or any kind of light catch it. It just looked like a hunched over, crouched humanoid in the middle of a bike path at night, too large to be a person whose high school didn't try to get him to play basketball. And hey. Maybe it was a drunk basketball player half a mile from campus. Or maybe not. I was torn between the realization that I was potentially witnessing something fantastic and the will to live beyond the moment. The will to live, fear, I guess, one. I immediately clambered up the embankment to the road, crossed the road, and walked the rest of the way home on the other side. The height difference, darkness, 
and existence of the berm kept me from seeing the form any further. I walked up the hill to my apartment, locked the door, and reflected on the bad poem line I had jotted earlier. I wondered if I was being followed by some evil creature and would be further hunted. Nothing else happened, and it became a funny story I told my friends in town. I don't know if this story and its details might be useful to anyone, but I wanted to offer it up. It's a true story. It happened. I have no explanation for it. Even if it was a human, it's a strange coincidence with the note. Maybe the most likely scenario is a stressed out graduate student hallucinated. Dunno. Did I saw a dog man? So this story is from a few years ago but me and my mother remember every single detail of what happened but I would like some advice. I was almost 100% sure I saw a skinwalker but the location doesn't add up? So when I was about in 7th or 8th grade me and my mom were driving home from a therapy approach of mine, note, nothing for being schizoid, just depression and such. It was winter and a full moon because I remember the snow glowing under the moon. It was only 6 but really dark out because, you know, it's in the middle of winter. So we are going about 55 miles per hour when this thing crosses and stops in front of us. The only way I can describe it is that it was if you combined a deer, a dog, and a human. It stood about as tall as our windshield, it had the legs of what I can describe as a deer, its back was hunched over and walking on all fours. It had the head of a dog but its eyes were white and it didn't have a tail. The freakish thing about this creature was its skin. It wasn't a canine with mange or anything it had actual human skin all the way down its legs, to long to be dog legs. It smelt of rotting meat and some parts the flesh was broken open like if you would scrape your knee. It was pale white and you could see its veins. And this thing was fast like it stood there and just ran across the road in the blink of an eye. Me and my mom had to pull over to calm down. We both saw it. This sighting was in southeastern Ohio, between Gallipolis and Athens. I haven't seen the creature since but it still haunts me to this day and on that highway I'm scared to see it again. Can anyone tell me what I saw? Thank you in advance. The Well-Behaved Werewolf My husband and I recently went and watched The Wolf of Snow Hollow and I was gushing to my in-laws how fun the movie was. While on the topic of werewolves, I shared this story this past weekend with them and it creeped them out. Years ago I was working at a veterinary clinic and I was kennel staff. We provided dog boarding and I frequently worked the weekends tending to the dogs, making sure they were walked, fed and cleaned up after. It was a pretty fun job. One weekend we had two big huskies staying with us. In retrospect, one of them was particularly tall and fluffy so it might have been a Malamute or Mutt or whatever. Regardless, they were great dogs and they didn't poop or pee in their kennel, they played outside great and were super friendly with me. In a word, well behaved. Monday rolled around and their owners were there to pick them up. For safety, when it came to big dogs, we were only to bring up one at a time from the kennels to the front lobby. I followed that protocol, grabbing the smaller one first. Before I proceed, I have to explain the kennel setup so this next part makes sense. Where we kept larger dogs was against the far wall of the kennel room. These were large indoor runs about 15x15 and both huskies stayed together in one such run over that weekend. The walls were made of stainless steel, for easy disinfecting, and about 15 in height. The front wall of the kennel was this special kind of reinforced glass so you could see the entirety of the kennel from outside of it. Also of interest, we only had one other guy staffed at the vet clinic and he was about 5-10 inches in height. So I brought out the first dog and there was lots of happy yelping and husky talk, those of you who own huskies know what I mean, when the dog was reunited with family. I brought up the second dog and he or she was very reserved, tail wagging and just generally happy. The owners didn't say a lot to me, 
other than thanks and have a good day and they didn't stay long once they had their dogs back. We generally had owners pay first before we brought dogs up from the kennels because it made it easier for the owners to not have to juggle their wallets and an excited dog. Task done, I went back to the kennels to clean up and get it ready for the next round of dogs to come in. I grabbed the spray bottle of disinfectant and made ready to clean the walls. And that's when I saw it. High up above me, about 14 up on the back wall, was a human handprint. And it wasn't a standard size, either. It was huge. Looking at it, I was thoroughly creeped out and got the handprint wiped off the stainless steel quickly using a multi-step stool, I'm 5 feet 5 inches. I told my co-workers, the vet techs, about it and they were creeped out too and told me to not bring it up again. I was the only one working kennels that morning. Between bringing up the last dog and returning to kennels, there was not enough time for our only male staff member to run in, jump up and leave a single handprint, I asked him later if he'd been in kennels at all and he said no, apparently around that time he was doing intake in a vet room. And like I said, the handprint was too big to belong to any normal sized human. And that's how I inadvertently took care of a well-behaved werewolf for a weekend. Tennessee? My friend and her family have experienced hearing stones clicking up at their home in the mountains. They live in a fairly secluded area about an hour from Gatlinburg. She described it happening at no specific time but when they'd hear it, the rocks clicking two or three times, every few minutes, it was too consistent to be something settling or moving around in the woods. It really freaked out her family. We were out in an open field, near our cabin, about a sprint or so away, stargazing and enjoying the chill in our bones. The entire time, I feel watched and begin hearing this clicking sound, and eventually grab my friend's attention to see if they could hear it. Sure enough, the sound was persisting, louder and closer now than before. But we couldn't see anything. It sounded as if it was right in front of us whatever was making that noise, but we couldn't see anything. Didn't smell anything, as I know that is also often attributed in a lot of sightings for a variety of things. All we could hear was the clicking of stones, and with no visible source for the sound, ourselves growing ever more scared, we decided it was time to head back inside. Had some trouble falling asleep, but once we settled down we were all out like broken lights. The rest of the trip was pretty fun, and then as we left, saying our farewells, we couldn't help but feel as if something or someone would miss being around us. At the least, I knew I'd most certainly miss that place, so breathtaking and serene, so I'm very excited to be going back here soon. Scariest night of my life. Very possible dog man encounter. Before I get started I just want to say this is a 100% true story that happened to me and a group of friends back in early July. This is not an attention grab of any sort. The events in which you will read may sound like the plot of a horror story but this is an actual night I lived through, no BS. I'm not an avid poster so sorry if the post is not up to reddit standards lol. I've been working up the courage to post my experience for some time. It is pretty lengthy but I believe it will be worth it for you. Please go easy on me in the comments like I said I don't post much at all. So my friends and I often go to my buddy's place just outside of Traverse City, Michigan a good 5 to 10 times throughout the course of a year and we usually stay for about 3 to 5 days at a time. There were 6 of us guys this time around all around 23 and 24 years old. This all happened the first night we got there. So we arrive at about 8 p.m. and as soon as we get there we throw back a couple beers and play some card games and listen to music and just BS. The night goes on and my friend that owns the place and another guy go to sleep at around midnight and the rest of us four decide to have a little bonfire. Bonfires are one of our favorite things to do up there because at night we can usually see every star in the sky, lots of shooting stars, 
and what we believe are UFOs and we just BS and tell stories. One of the guys we were with had only been there one other time and it was in the winter so he didn't get to experience any outdoor activities at night last time he was there so we made sure he got to see the sky and stuff. So the property is perched up on a steep hill with woods all around the very steep back and both of the sides. The woods directly behind the house aren't that thick and you can see the winding road that leads up to the hilly neighborhood. Just beyond the road is a main road and then Lake Michigan. All of which you can see from all areas of the back of the house. The main level has a walkout balcony deck with stairs that lead out to the bonfire pit directly to the right of the home. So anyway the four of us each grab a beer and go down there and the first thing we notice is that there is a full moon. It was hard to miss because through the trees it looked like a spotlight was shining on us around the bonfire. We were talking around the bonfire, look in at the sky and we kept bringing up the fact that the moon was so bright. One of my friends says to the guy who has only been up there one other time let's just call him the new guy, have you heard of the dog man? We always joke about the dog man around the bonfire up there. If you don't know about the Michigan Dogman it is an urban legend and Therese even a song that was made about it that used to play on the radio a long time ago in Northern Michigan, so after he said that I just had this eerie feeling. I kept feeling like I was being watched and hearing stuff behind me prior to that. I'm situated so that my back is to the woods with one friend directly across from me whose back is to the house and the other two are in the middle facing the steep hill with the thinner woods. Their backs are to the stairs leading up to the deck. Anyway they were all laughing about the dog man and I was just thinking like nah I don't want to joke about that tonight. So one friend says to the other you should play him the dog man song and I said out loud guys I don't think that's a good idea, let's not get him up in here, kinda jokingly but not really. They play the song and we are all laughing but I'm still hearing weird unusual noises behind. Not your average branches falling or chipmunks running around. It sounded like a bigger animal to me and I could tell that the new guy heard it too. It's about 2 AM at this point and they're all on the topic of scary stories and paranormal while I'm pretty quit and I'm usually the talker of the group. I keep hearing stuff and I'm starting to get nervous. The new guy is telling a personal scary story and I hear something big directly behind me. It sounded like something walking and so then I finally speak up and say guys I'm hearing things they kind of look at me and ignore me and they continue with the story. I hear it again but I didn't say anything I kind of just shine my phone flashlight down the hill to the right of me. I didn't see anything. A few minutes go by and it's still story time for them while I'm on edge trying to keep my cool. I hear the noise again and this time it was louder and I say guys shut up I hear something big they get quiet and listen but nothing. They continue their story. I'm scanning the area from the back right of me to in front of the right back and forth then all of a sudden I see something walking, something huge. I couldn't make out the shape of it exactly but the head looked almost like a deer but with a shorter snout and a wider and rounder head. It was walking straight, heading away from me parallel to me and the guy across from me but like 20 feet to the right on the steep decline. There are bushes right on top of the hill right in front of the bonfire and its head was clear over it. I stood in the same spot the next day and I could not see over the bushes and M5 apostrophe 10. Whatever it was it wasn't looking at me it was just facing the direction it was going. There could have been multiple but I couldn't tell. I glanced at it, freaked the hell out. Grabbed all of my stuff while yelling to my friends I just saw something, I just saw something. I'm going upstairs I don't care what you guys do but I'm going to bed. They were telling me to stay but I was already making my way to the steps. I calmly said one last time you guys can stay I don't care I'm going to sleep now I've had enough they say whatever and continue talking. As soon as I take my first step upstairs I hear the loudest most monstrous roar from behind me. By far the scariest noise I've ever heard ever. It sounded like a monster out of a movie. They heard it too and freaked out. I yelled. Come on come on. As I glanced behind me and saw them jump up and run towards me. We all ran up the stairs as fast as we could. 
ran across the deck and as soon as we passed the first kitchen window all of the lights in the house went out. I freaked out turned around towards them as I'm yelling. The power went out, the power went out. What do we do I heard one say. Just go, just go. As soon as we pass the second window the power goes back on. We get in the house run down to the lower level and try to wake up the friend who owns the place. We are all yelling at him that something is outside and that he needs to get up. He would not budge and just said go to bed. We didn't want to wake up the other guy because we didn't know him that well at the time and didn't want him to think we were weirdos. Us four gather in one of the rooms and are shook up as all hell. We ask each other what the hell was that. As him yelling I told you about me seeing something. I go on to tell them exactly what I saw and that I wasn't around. We try to figure out what the hell we should do next and consider leaving and getting a hotel or just driving four hours south back home. We all had the feeling as if something was trying to kill us. We've all never been so scared and we all love the outdoors. Do a big hiking and camping trip in the upper peninsula once a year but we've never heard anything like that. We are still all talking 100 miles per hour when we hear the Amazon Echo aka Alexa a whole two levels above us at full volume. Which we didn't even have it on earlier. Say sorry, Alexa cannot connect to Wi-Fi right now please try again later. So we all get even more frantic and realize none of our phones have service. We calm down and after about 5 minutes of silence and listening for noises we discuss the fact that if we are going to leave then we will have to go upstairs anyway and grab the keys. We man up and slowly walk up there. Everything is dead silent. No wine no outdoor noises no nothing, and majority of the windows are open in the house. There are a lot of windows on the main level all really big with no blinds or curtains so if something was outside it could most likely see us but we couldn't see it because of the reflection. We decide to shut off all lights so we could see outside and lock all the doors and windows. We go over to the spare bedroom on the left side of the house and all peek out the big window to see if we can see anything below us on the steep hill. We didn't see anything but we noticed something very strange and unusual for this time of night in a neighborhood of mostly older folks. There was car on the winding road behind the house down below facing our direction with its hazard lights on. We all stare at it for 5 to 10 minutes and are wondering what it's doing, did it see what I saw, did it hear what we heard, did it hit something. This is kind of a private road and neighborhood so it was just all very unusual especially it being after 3 am during quarantine, 20 minutes away from town. It eventually turns its hazard lights off and does a U-turn which is also very unusual then flicks its headlights on and goes off on the main road. We all agree that that was weird as hell then continue our night looking out the windows but we didn't see anything. None of us went to sleep that night and we continued to hear little noises as we were trying to get some shut eye but those were probably out of paranoia. When our other friends woke up we told them what we went through but they just laughed and didn't really seem to believe it. We were there three more nights after that, but they were completely normal. I've even been back there on two separate occasions since then and both times have been nothing out of the ordinary. All I can say is that I've never in my life experienced fear like that. It felt like I was living in a classic horror movie and I actually thought I was going to die. P.S. The following day we googled and YouTubed all of the large animal noises we could think of like moose, a buck, a black bear, ect. But we couldn't compare it. One of the guys compared it to a car with a V8 engine stepping all the way down on the gas pedal right next to his ear that's how loud it seemed. The new guy didn't remember hearing the noise a couple days later but remembered everything else. Then me and the other friend just thought it sounded like a straight up monster. For the rest of the trip we all came to the conclusion that it was a probably a bear. On our way back home we did more research and realized the only bear in Michigan are black bears and they only stand about 5 feet on their hind legs. Plus the figure in which I saw looked more like a gray color. Anyway, thank you for reading and sorry for the length. Please share opinions. What do you think it could have been? Sasquatch, extraterrestrial, dog man, some everyday woodland animal?
I think there's something sinister lurking in my grandparents' farm. Okay, so I have been a skeptic of creepy paranormal things my entire life. I have never really believed in that type of stuff. But the things I have heard slash witnessed at my grandparents' farm shakes me to my core. My grandparents own a large plot of land in central Missouri and they have owned that land for around 40 years. I have been to that farm over 10 times and every time I go I always get this terrifying feeling that something is watching me, like there's always something behind my back. I have also had many strange encounters there that are downright bizarre. My first encounter with whatever the hell this thing was when I was around the age of 7 to 9, I am currently 14, we had brought our dog named Spot to that farm, he was a silver lab who I loved dearly. I was exploring in the forest behind the house just enjoying the summer breeze when my dog started growling. A deep sinister growl that I have never heard him make. I turned around quickly to see what he was growling at, but could see nothing but forests along forests. While my eyes were scanning the area of where my dog was growling, some animal shot out of the brush so fast I could barely see what it was, and before I knew it, it was gone. I sat there for what felt like an eternity absolutely flabbergasted by what I just witnessed. From what I could see of it, it looked like a coyote but the speed at which it moves was absolutely insane. Moved at like 90 miles an hour and made almost no noise. But the most creepy part was that the place it jumped out of didn't even make an imprint of where it was laying and from where I viewed it jumping up I should have been able to easily see where it was hiding. Shocked by what I witnessed I just decided that was enough and went back inside the house. My second encounter happened when I was around 10, I was visiting the place and like usual I was getting the feeling I was being watched. That first day was normal and nothing really creepy happened, I was just spending quality time with family. But when night came that's when stuff started happening. I was trying to sleep in the twin bed that was shared by my mom's brother when he used to live there. When I heard tapping, not tiny little taps but loud taps almost like banging, it was coming from the direction of the window. I slowly sat up and looked at the window but there was nothing so I assumed it was just some animal or something like that. Five minutes passed and no tapping and I was drifting off to sleep when boom. This time not a tap, a slam a loud slam directly into the window, I'm not talking about like a hit, it sounded as if something absolutely massive hit the window. I shot up so quickly I nearly passed out. I decided enough was enough and grabbed a flashlight in the drawer and shined it out the window, nothing. 10 seconds passed, nothing. I was about to go crawl into my mom's bed when I heard it, a screech. A screech that was not achievable by any human. So loud it pierced the quiet peaceful summer night. I can't put it into words what that sound sounded like but it was dark and horrible and I still remember it to this day. I froze. Unable to move muscle I was so scared. I was sitting there still as a statue, petrified by what I heard. That's when my instincts kicked in and they told me to run into my mom's room, which I did. For some reason, I didn't wake her up I just cuddled up next to her and didn't sleep the entire night, all I could think of was that sound, that horrid terrible, bloody screech. My next encounter was when I was around the age of 13, I was back at my grandparents just enjoying my time like I usually do when my grandpa suggested that we go deer watching. I agreed because I had been doing this since as long as I could remember and it was never an issue and it was extremely fun. So we took the Polaris and went out at around 6 to 7 p.m. to look for deer. We decided to go into the most eastern pasture because that's usually where we spotted the most deer. 30 minutes passed and we had seen a few deer but not as much as we usually do, but then this is where the thing begins. I get that feeling again, that dreadful feeling that something is there, in the shadows watching me. But this time it's a lot more intense, like it's right up behind me but when I look it's never there. But this time, it appears that my grandpa feels the same presence as me too. Just to let all of you know, my grandpa is a very laid back individual always joking and having a laugh the only time I've seen him be very serious is when my great uncle died a couple of years ago. So when I start feeling that I'm being watched, 
My grandpa goes from a happy and laid back expression to very serious and alert expression. He gripped the wheel so tight his knuckles turned white and was constantly looking around like to make sure something wasn't following us. He then made a massive U-turn out of nowhere and started heading back to the house. I asked him what are you doing and replied with we're heading back to the house the tone of his voice was cold, like he had witnessed someone being murdered. At this point he was gripping the wheel even harder and was absolutely going pedal to the metal full speed back to the house. I decided not to ask any questions until we got back to the house which we did in no time at all. Once we were there he rushed me into the house constantly checking his back to make sure something wasn't there. When we were inside he closed and locked the door tight. His behavior was very alarming and it really shocked me to my core. I decided that all of the stuff I had witnessed was enough and only asked him one question. What the hell is going on here? When I said that he looked at me and gave me a cold expression and said I have some things I need to explain to you we then sat down for 30 minutes and he explained that whatever this thing that was living on his property has been here since the day he moved in and he and my mother experienced the same thing that was happening to me the first few years of living here. He explained that he has seen whatever this thing is and that it doesn't like new visitors hence why I was experiencing all of these problems. He told me about all of the things that he had witnessed and experienced and they seemed to have been pretty similar to what was happening to me. He told me that he knew this was going to happen to me and that we was always watching to make sure I never got hurt because he knew this creature better than anyone else. We talked some more but all of it was the same. It was now late and he decided that I couldn't sleep alone so he had me sleep with my mom. We luckily promptly left the next morning. I have not been back since that day. Last encounter this last encounter isn't really an encounter, two things that have happened at my grandparents farm. Recently we brought my sister's horse to their farm. The first night for the horse was hell. My sister's horse has always been very friendly and not shy. But the first night of my sister's horse being at the farm was bizarre. The next morning my grandpa woke up and was doing his usual chores and went to go feed the horse he noticed that the horse was acting very weird, extremely shy and timid, but when he took a better look he was shocked. The horse had three 10 inch gashes down its side, like something has clawed at it. It was ruled out that the horse ran into the fence. But I think otherwise. Also around the same time. My grandparents adopted a dog and named it Panda. Panda was a Jack Russell Terrier who was two months of age. Five days later he was found dead with deep puncture wounds on his body with his neck slashed up. They ruled it out as a bobcat or mountain lion but I also think otherwise. So I live in Missouri. In big woods. There is creepy stuff. My game camera several years ago caught a picture of something I don't want to see in person. It was very tall around I would say 7 feet or taller. Outlined dark body but with glowing from the flash eyes. Not a man but standing upright like us. Not a clear picture but the glowing eyes only happen with animals not humans. On the camera. And we have lost, dead, cattle with scratches that are deep and long. But don't eat the animal. No blood. Just weird. Insurance blamed cougar. But you would think they would eat their kill. So strange story he tells but, I think he tells truth. Hit something with my car. Yo, so I have no idea what it could have been and figured I'd ask Reddit. The best way to describe what I hit would be as a three or four foot tall stick figure, pale white with no discernible head. I was on the highway when the little bastard ran at me and plowed over it with my car. I saw through my rear view that it was getting back up, gotta love inner city highways, where 55 is the speed limit, anyone have any clue at all as to what I just saw? Dover demon-like thing in Montana. I was 18 when this story took place, 
In the winter of 2015, it's not super long, and not particularly scary, though I sure was terrified when it happened. It was on a logging road south of Swan Lake, Montana, sort of near Beaver Creek I believe. There was a decent amount of snow on the ground. I was visiting home, Swan Lake Mount, for a couple days and my little sister, 17F, and I wanted to go for a drive and listen to music. So we drive for a good 20 minutes away and find this back road and pull off a good distance from the main road so no one would see us. It was pitch black out, and in winter it's so dead silent at night it's eerie. Especially out in the boonies like that. I left my headlights on because I had this creepy feeling like we were being watched, but just figured it was a deer or something. I'd seen moose on that road before, so I knew it was busy. My sister and I were having a conversation when I looked out into the trees and I swear I see this emaciated pale white humanoid type thing just barely trying to hide behind a tree. It was still in the darkness beyond my headlights so it kind of melted into the shadows. I stared at it for a long time, my sister was involved with something she was talking about so she was oblivious to my change in mood. I couldn't take my eyes off of it, it had this misshaped head that was too big for its thin body. And its eyes were two huge black unblinking marbles. It didn't move or do anything so I kind of told myself it was just something I was seeing in the shadows, it was just beyond the light enough that I could write it off that easily I guess. I went back to talking with my sister for a while and decided to see if I could still see the shape of the creature in the shadows and the next time I looked up it was closer, now just at the edge of the light. I felt so scared my eyes filled with tears. It was sort of hunched to its right side, and was standing with a rounded back with its bony weird hands in a claw shape. I had pulled into the beginning of a single lane road that was plowed 10 feet in, there was no room for me to turn around so I had to back out. I made the terrible mistake of just gunning it backwards, every time I kept looking back it was closer and closer. I ripped the plastic covering off of the driver's side mirror almost hitting a tree in my rush. I hate to say that I left it there, I was too scared to stop and pick it up. Sorry mother nature. My sister never saw the thing, she was super confused about why I randomly decided to get quiet and then book it out. We drove for a while longer but I didn't pull off anywhere, I still felt really creeped out. It took me a while to get comfortable going out in the woods alone or driving down back roads alone at night again. I definitely still have no clue what it was, it wasn't some confused hiker wandering around naked, but it had the upright body of a person. Looked kind of like those Dover demon sketches but I was between Swan Lake and Sealy Lake Montana, and it was white and ashen. I don't know what it was, but it knew me. Last year, 2021, I got a new tent, sealed the seams up real good and decided to test it out with a weekend solo camp in Rocky Mountain National Park. I packed up my backpack, told my wife is be back in a few days, hopped in the car and was on my way. I followed a road up to a spot that looked like a good place to park, locked the car and started walking. The trail I found was pretty easy just a few down trees and a little rock scramble were the only obstacles. Anyway, I saw a little clearing from the trail and went to check it out. It was a perfect spot. I remember thinking, wow I got real lucky finding this spot. The only downside was how hard the ground was, I broke four tent stakes. As I'm pitching my tent it starts to drizzle a bit, No biggie I'll just put a tarp up to so I can have a small fire and stretch out a little. I got the tent up, shoved my gear in it, hung the tarp, and gathered all the dry kindling and what I could find. The rain picked up as I was cooking my dinner of cheese and broccoli noodles with a packet of chicken mixed in, and honestly it was so peaceful and relaxing I thought I'd never want to leave. The sun has set, my fire was dwindling, and the rain was consistent, so I decided it was time for bed. I got in my little tent, inflated my sleeping pad and pillow, put on my sleeping clothes, and snuggled up in my sleeping bag. There's nothing like the sound and smell of rain hitting your tent. It just knocks me out. 
About 0200 I hear what sounds like deer walking through my little campsite, but I don't think anything of it caused deer are pretty chill. Then I hear a voice say, hey, hey bearded underscore adventurer. And I woke right up. I grabbed my flashlight off my belt which was laying by my head and turned it on. I unzipped the tent a little and was looking around but didn't see anything so I zipped it up and thought I was just hearing things. I laid back down and decided I was probably dreaming so I was going to go back to sleep. As soon as I got comfy again I heard it again. Hey bearded underscore adventurer. Hey. Hey. Okay. WTF. I'm gonna go have a proper look around. I put my pants on and toss on my rain jacket, get my boots on and grab my flashlight and knife. I stepped out of the tent and stood up to look around. There was nothing there. I checked around the tarp, over by where I used the restroom, and in the direction of the trail. There was nothing anywhere. So now I'm thoroughly freaked out, it's dark and raining, and it's just me about 100 yards from the trail. I probably would have stayed up the rest of the night but it was cold so I crawled back into my sleeping bag and fell asleep. The next morning, I got dressed and stepped outside. There was deer tracks all over my little campsite and my small pile of firewood that I had left under the tarp was all scattered around. Well, that's enough of that. I packed up camp, did my little leave no trace sweep of the area and walked swiftly to my car. Camping trip cut short. I keep telling myself it was probably just deer, but I have no idea what was calling me by name. I plan on going back to that same spot this summer though, but maybe with a friend this time. Can anyone confirm if this was a skinwalker? Okay so when I was a kid there was a golf course behind my backyard gate and sometimes coyotes are spotted in the area and packs so I remember waking up one night because I heard something bang in my backyard. I opened my blinds to look out and see nothing at all but a group of coyotes I don't think much of it and well go back into my bed. That's when I heard loud rustling like multiple animals were running around so at this point I was fed up with it so I grabbed my flashlight and turn it on hoping I can at least get them out of my backyard. I see the pack run away by slipping through the gates, Def should have had that blocked, but the thing that scared the hell out of me that night was what I caught a glimpse of. As I turn my flashlight off I quickly see a thing I can't even describe it. It looked skinny human hunched over in all fours but it kind of resembled a large dog. I don't think much of it at the time because well I was 10 and was pretty tired but in the morning as I let my dog out I see a bright red spot in the backyard. Right where I saw it. I know it sounds fake but I know what I saw. I can still feel like it's watching me. Can anyone confirm if this was a skinwalker? Wendigo, crawler humanoid, or something else? Terrifying encounter in Androscoggin County, Maine. An Androscoggin County, Maine recounts his terrifying experience with a possible Wendigo while walking late at night. The creature stalked him, whispered at him, and eventually showed itself. A following account was recently forwarded to me, throughout my youth and in through adulthood, I've had several encounters with entities and energies that are not of this realm at least not as far as science and history is concerned. These past few years, I've had several terrifying experiences, while being stalked while taking walks late at night around Turner, Maine. Sometimes, I'm overcome with a sense of fear that's animalistic and an innate sense of paranoia consumes me, as if something is watching from the woods and that I need to get to safety fast. On other occasions, I've actually had something, quite aggressively, follow alongside me, from the tree line, chasing me away from certain areas, whispering in a low, human-like tone. It sounds like human footsteps crunching across tree branches, leaves, but so much larger, heavier than any human can step. This thing also can hurl itself from treetop to treetop. The power of it's so great that it has actually knocked down trees, full-size trees as it leaps. I could not make this up. It is terrifying to be followed by something that's whispering as it walks in the trees beside you, 
even when you're running. That can seemingly teleport from one side of the road to the other in seconds. And is so big that it can knock down trees as it jumps from top to top. It is so evasive, it can do all of these things while remaining hidden and not perceived by the naked eye. Besides those encounters, I've visually seen something I can only relate as a Wendigo. It was either comfortable enough with my energy to reveal itself, or something else altogether. Maybe it wanted to eat me, maybe it wanted to possess me, maybe it wanted to speak to me. I really don't know because I didn't stick around long enough to find out. The energy of this thing, the way it looked, was so offensive, so terrifying, I only remained long enough to visualize what I instinctively knew was coming through the woods and was about to show itself to me. I was frozen while I waited for this thing to come out of the woods. Looking back, I don't know if it was curiosity or the power of the creature itself. I locked eyes with this thing and when I did, I was suddenly watching myself from its perspective. As if I was now inside the creature. Horrified, I tore myself away, luckily I was on the front steps right next to the door, and ran inside with a lit cigarette, I was so scared, I wasn't even thinking any thought besides run. Now. I locked the door, hurried to my bedroom and screamed for my housemate. I refused to even step out of my bedroom for the entire night and I pulled down the blinds. This particular encounter was so terrifying I was shaking for hours and didn't sleep that night. Some definite details I can remember of this creature was that its face was sunken in. And its head very large in size. Where its eyes should have been, were craters of black, and in the middle, golden, glowing orbs, that were very bright and flame-like. It was on all fours, but this thing can 100% easily walk if it wanted to. The creature was very, very thin. I remember that detail very clear. Its chest was near skeletal and its stomach caved in as if it hadn't eaten in 100 years. Its arms and legs both were very long, both arms and legs were insanely muscled and massive. Honestly, its arms and legs were the only part of the creature's anatomy that had any mass about it. The creature itself was huge. I'm talking like 10 foot tall easy. And if I had to guess, it weighed anywhere between 500 to 600 pounds. It seemingly had fur covering some parts of its body. Along the tops of its arms, back and thighs, but the fur was scarce. Initially, I thought werewolf, but after looking up different cryptids, I can safely say I don't think it was that. Another detail I remember was its mouth. This thing was smiling at me. Its teeth were razor sharp, almost needle-like and long. The size of its smile and the teeth took up most of its face. Where a nose should have been, there were just nostrils, almost like a skull. Its face, actually was very skull-like. The whole body very skeletal. This thing, by the way, was not the only cryptid I've encountered or been chased by. The Androscoggin River area and all around Androscoggin County is very terrifying, old, haunted and linked to some type of portal, I believe. Ley lines perhaps? All of this is just dust in the wind and only things I know as fact are from what I personally have witnessed and heard. So many times at night, while walking along the river, I've heard screams so terrifying so otherworldly, I can only relate it to the cry of a banshee. And the woods around Lake Auburn and also, around Mount Appetite, heading toward Mechanic Falls and then, in the other direction, toward Sabatis and Turner. This area has insanely negative, abrasive, offending energy and if you're going to walk at night, try to be aware. And yes, I know how all of this sounds. Rest assured, I'm not delusional or any sense of crazy. I'm just looking to hear other stories of a similar nature. Please help me identify this, the most frightening thing I've ever seen. I was driving alone in a national park, very far from people, on a bright full moon night. Huge clear moon, the kind of moonlight you can read by. The road went straight along the bottom of a wide, flat, mostly barren valley, 
then banked up and sharply left, onto the ridge. It was about 10 p.m., and I drove through the valley on full alert, watching for animals and loving the scenery in the crazy bright moonlight. When I hit the curve and went into that sharp uphill left, I saw something through my side window. White thing. It was rapidly getting larger in my peripheral vision, as though it had been moving parallel to me, but the turn in the road meant I was now in its path. So I turned my head and looked directly. It was white man-shaped but without genitals, and naked. A deathly, nauseating white with a greasy shine, completely hairless. It was crawling, on its hands and knees, but it was half the size of the car, and it was coming so very, very fast. It had a rubbery face, distorted by hate or a scream, black eyes that reflected the moonlight. The look on its face, I can't even tell you, I can still make myself feel sick from the memory. I believed that it was intelligent, and that it wanted to tear me apart with its teeth. The speed was horrifying, it went from being a small white spot to spitting distance in the time it took to make that turn. When I unfroze myself and hit the gas, it was on the road, and I braced for it to run into my car door. And then it was gone. The rearview mirror showed me nothing. I have never told anybody. I have seen a few minor glitchy slash ghosty things over my many years, but nothing has ever frightened me like that. It was looking at me. And I don't know what it was. I can't seem to find any reference to anything like it, and I would like to know if this thing is known to folklore. If another subreddit would be better to ask, just say. Thanks. Edit, thank you all for the replies so far. I looked into the Skinwalker and Wendigo ideas, and it's a case of almost but not quite. Are Skinwalkers ever seen without skins? Then maybe. Can Wendigos be stocky instead of skinny? Then maybe. I am most intrigued by the Massachusetts story. Also, while I describe it as screaming, that's just the look on its face. I heard nothing. This happened in Newfoundland. Newfoundlanders have no trouble telling ghost stories, and a lot of them believe in fairies, but I've not heard of a creature like this. As for the bear idea, Newfoundland has only black bears, hell I even tried to tell myself it was a badly lost wet polar bear, but when I say the thing was crawling, I mean I could see its legs below the knee. I was very close to it by the end, and it looked like a crawling man. I spent a lot of time in that area and encouraged storytelling in the bar, but nothing like this ever got mentioned. But as I said, I never told this story either. The degree of fear involved somehow put it in its own category. As if it would be very, very bad luck to speak of it, because it had seen me too. I never thought I believed in them, but I think it was a demon. tall pale humanoid figure and strange noises in the woods. I made an account literally just to post this because I have no clue what is going. I live in central northern Massachusetts in the middle of the woods, but not too far from the center of town, maybe about a couple of miles. For the past few months, my family and I have become convinced our house is haunted, but I wasn't really bothered by it. Whatever it is isn't too much of a nuisance and hasn't done anything to harm us so we don't really mind. It has mostly just been apparitions, things turning on on their own, and our pets getting spooked by nothing. That was until the more physical things started to happen, and I'm not sure if they are somehow connected to the peaceful presence in our house. About a month ago I was up late around 3 AM watching YouTube. It was warm out so I had my window open along with the curtain. Suddenly, I heard what sounded like a grown man angrily scream right in our yard. My heart literally dropped and I was frozen in fear. Like I said before, we're in the middle of the woods and there are only a few houses around us, no one would be screaming in our yard at 3 AM. I laid there for a few minutes listening for anything else, and I even rewinded the video I was watching to make sure what I heard wasn't just in the video. Finally, I got the courage to get up. I closed my window and woke up my mom, who I still live with, and she went around the house with me, turning on all the outside lights and seeing if there was anyone in our yard. There was nothing. 
I keep thinking about how if I hadn't laid there paralyzed with fear, I would have been able to see whoever or whatever it was. The next night I slept with my window open again, stupid, I know, and I had the most vivid dream I have ever had. In it, I was watching myself sleep, but outside the window staring in at me was the extremely pale face. It looked almost human, but not quite. I ended up jolting awake completely terrified, and slamming my window shut and closing the shade. But I just kept having the dream over and over again for the next few days. Over the next few weeks, I kept hearing weird noises in the woods in broad daylight as well as late at night. It sounded like something was hitting branches with a stick. Even my dog heard it and was running around the yard barking up a storm in an attempt to defend his house. Fast forward to yesterday, my brother was home alone around 9 p.m. He went to let our dog outside, but when he got out onto our indoor porch he saw something in the yard. The only light in the backyard was coming from the light inside the house. It illuminated a tall humanoid figure, maybe around 7 feet, in the yard, standing about 15 feet away from the house, right in front of our fire pit. It had no clothes on, was incredibly skinny, and it apparently was so pale that it appeared to glow in the light. Thankfully, he did not let our dog out and went inside locking the doors and shutting the windows, waiting for our mom to get home. I know that he could just be lying, but when our mom got home he was absolutely terrified, and basically just hid in the living room until she got there. I've known him his whole life and he has never lied about something like this and is in fact a horrible liar. So I'm confident he is telling the truth. I'm currently sitting out on my indoor porch at around 8 p.m. typing this, waiting to see if I can spot it or at least hear something. I'm honestly debating on whether or not I should sleep out here. I did a little reading beforehand on some creatures and came across this subreddit for crawlers. When my brother described it, he said it was standing completely upright, he didn't see it walk or crawl in any way. Could it still be a crawler? Are we in any danger? And is it possible that it is somehow connected to the paranormal stuff that has been happening in our house? Northwest Tennessee. Me and my pregnant wife were staying at my parents' house in Northwest Tennessee on September 17, 2021. It is about 50 yards from our new house. I went out on their back patio to smoke a cigarette around 12 AM. Over the fence I heard something that sounds like it was choking on something but at the same time sounded like a distorted pig squealing. It would make sounds in about 2 to 3 second spurts. I honestly thought it was a hawk or owl, anything that could be explained. I thought it was definitely weird but probably natural. About three hours later I couldn't sleep and decided I would go to the gym. As I'm walking to my car, across the yard and towards the road I hear this same weird sound coming from about 50 yards away at my 10 o'clock direction. I looked around and I couldn't see anything or hear anything. Then I hear hey. Hey. In a woman's voice coming from the same direction. So I looked back up and there was nothing there. As I'm scanning the yard I hear that loud squealing noise again. I got in my car and dipped as fast as possible. I thought it was weird but didn't give it a second thought until a month later I was on TikTok and saw a video of a man riding a horse in Arizona I believe. And in the video I heard a woman say hey. Hey, this makes him and the horse both freak out and run away. It was believed to be a skinwalker in the video, but I've also heard this could be a crawler. When I heard that same voice and those same words, almost like a recording, my heart sank to my stomach. I really don't believe in any of this and I've tried every way I can to disprove it and I truly can't. It doesn't scare me as much anymore as it intrigues me. I am so so curious to know what that was and why me. I'll try to keep this short. Back in 1995 a friend who is connected to the dark side, unbeknownst to me at the time, suggested I go fishing in a pond in southern York. It is a summer day around June, 
and I find the place. When I get there, I find about 10 people fishing. Soon it begins to get dark and everybody leaves. Being the determined fisherman I was. I stay. As dawn begins to turn a car pulls up. Out the car two girls dressed in long dresses resembling hippies get out. The car was a late model 70s car. I continue to fish with utter determination. As time passes, it goes from dawn to dark. The girls get up, get in their car and leave. Not some few minutes later I get this weird feeling like I was being watched on my right side. I shrug it off and continue to cast away. About 15 minutes later, the feeling of being watched intensifies. It progresses to the point that I'm staring to get scared. For my life. As a former Marine, I said to hell with it and tried to ignore this sensation. Soon, I couldn't take it anymore. I tried to play it cool and hurriedly gather my things. I ran like the devil was after me. Now here's the fun part. I spent one and a half years in the Gulf War. Slept with God knows what and have been afraid for my life at times, due to the warlike conditions. But that day I truly felt if I hadn't left I would have died. A week or so I got visit my friend and explained what happened. He stops me on my tracks to tell me the girls prior to the feeling were ghost. Naturally I think he's messing with me. He then begins to tell me about Rahmeyer's Hollow. I again, doubt him. Then he pulls his copy of The Lost Friend, the book Rahmeyer's was allegedly, killed for. It is at this time I realize there's something to this story. So I go to the library downtown and sure enough I learn all about Rahmeyer's. Okay get ready. If I have had previous knowledge about Rahmeyer's Hollow you would logically say, there was prior conditions to create this whole thing in my mind. But wait. I was born in Puerto Rico and never heard of Rahmeyer's until that very moment. Now, you tell me. An ex-Marine, who slept yards from the enemy, who slept in the dark hearing things. I don't get scared easily. I will not tell anyone that I heard, or saw, or felt anything. Quite the contrary. I didn't see, hear, or felt Jack. Yet, that day, I felt if I had not left hurriedly I would have died. I can't explain it. It was just a feeling. I tell you what. That place is for real. I've visited the place again for trout fishing and cannot stay there long. There is something lurking and watching. So who were the girls? My dad says they were angels looking out for me. The strange thing looking back, is that these girls acted very strangely. And I swear they floated out of there. It wasn't obvious at first, but in retrospect. They were not human. Who's this buddy of mine who tells me to visit this place? No other than York's own creepy and strange author, Brian Keane. We shared some interest about that time, mostly music and work. I have other interesting stories about Mr. Keen, but that's beyond this story. I do believe, Ra Mayers was killed for that rare book, The Long Lost Friend, with only a few hundred copies known to exist worldwide. Then again, was he really killed? According to some, he came back and opened the seven gates of hell here in York. That's another story for Mr. Keen to explain. Anyways, I want all to know, that this place is for real. Stay far away. So I'm writing this since no one from around here has shared anything remotely similar, and with here, I mean my country. I'm from Spain, and in the summer I normally go to my grandparents' place, located in the southeast of Andalusia. They live in the countryside, with the closest town being a solid 20-minute drive away. I usually spend my nights out with friends and return back home at around 1 am, which in itself takes a solid 7 minutes. While returning one night, as I was basically 2 minutes away from my grandparents, something compelled me to look at my right. As I turn my head I see a white creature, smaller than a cow but bigger than a runt, running on all fours like a human would but more effectively, if that makes any sense, and disappearing behind a bush. I was absolutely shocked, but didn't really run, 
I turned on my flashlight and proceeded to walk home and sleep. I would have just given this one to my imagination if it weren't that a few days later, while asking, someone in that same town matched the exact description of what I saw, claiming to have seen it during daylight years before I did. Any suggestions and questions are more than welcome, I really want exterior opinions the only animals living there are cows, and they weren't there that day, since they usually move them to other fields I can post exact pics of the bush if needed, I really just want to talk about this without being judged lol. The Wetlands Experience About 5 years ago me and my older sister went to a nature park, a wetland so to speak. Of course we went at night so we could skateboard around cause you aren't allowed to. But you know, a 14 year old trying to look cool in front of her 24 year old sister. Well we went just around as the sun was setting. For a little bit we got lost since the park was so huge and condensed with a thick woods. We were trying to find the bridge, a 20 feet or so bridge so we can hang out just above the rushing river. By the time we got there the sun was hardly visible over the mountains. I looked around after drinking my water and here is where the creepy stuff happened. As I looked at the other side of the bridge I saw a tall skinny figure. I first shrugged it off like it was a person, maybe a ranger of the park. But then it got on all fours and walked away. I didn't say anything at first, mainly because I thought it was maybe a bear. I looked back at my sister as we chatted about boys and along many other things. Then I looked back at the end of the bridge. My sister did too and we both saw the figure this time. At this point I was totally freaked out, mind you it's still not dark out the sky was purple and orange so it wasn't like we were seeing things like when your mind pictures figures in the dark. No. It was right there and getting closer. I told my sister to get the hell out of there. Her going first off the bride and down the hill. I went second and as I turned to look at the bridge again it was five feet in front of me on all fours once again. It stood there as me and my sister skated off and this isn't even the end. I told my sister to head to the main building since there is cameras and lots of light. We skateboarder for what seemed like hours, every minute seemed to last eternity. As we finally get to the main building we finally stopped ridding our boards. Out of breath and scared we both looked around. By this time, it was pitch black outside. We made a mad dash to the car taking a path we have never seen before but it was outside the park which made us feel safer. After we got to my sister's jeep we both got in, hearts racing and scared out of our minds. And when we tried to leave the gate was locked. Meaning we couldn't leave since there was only one way in and out of the park. We got even more scared. We tried everything to get out. We even thought about just leaving the car behind and walking the two hours home. But we drove onto the sidewalk and got out of the park. To this day I won't go back to those wetlands ever again. Even in daylight. Whatever that thing was I never want to see it again. I can't stop thinking about it. And I'm almost 19. You can think this is just a story but it really did happen. Me and my sister don't even talk about it to this day. Something changed between us, I could feel it after that day. An update, sorry that it took a year, but life happens. I wanted to answer some of the comments. On what it looked like, for some reason I remember getting tunnel bison. It was all black, I couldn't make out anything besides the fact it was tall and skinny like it hadn't been fed in weeks even months. At some point I remember thinking it was just a coyote seeing as those are very common. I didn't want to believe anything else. I just had to call it something and move on. Even my sister can't say what it looked like, she even thought as was a ghost. I've been thinking it over and over going from skin walker, to windigo, to crawler and I've been stumped. And for all I know it could have even been my mind playing tricks on me, since it was almost dark. But again my sister saw it too. It's something I honestly hope to never go through or see again even if it was our eyes playing tricks on us. Back in 2017, 
I used to live with my aunt in MN, Minnesota, and while living with her I had worked at the nearby Walgreens which was about a 35 to 40 minute bike ride from her place. This event happened in October eerily enough, lol. But one night I had worked the closing shift, but we didn't close and leave till about 30 to 40 minutes longer than what we used to do to lots of work needing to be done. I bike to and from work so as someone who believes in the paranormal stuff 100% biking home at night was always an eerie thing to do because my mind would often go wild. Now the route I take to go home, is a somewhat isolated one, I have to go past a park, and a lot of wooded areas, and it's barely lit up as there aren't many street lights or houses for most of that route. I had just gotten to the park area, where it's more naturey and woodsy, I was talking to an ex on the phone, was currently my GF at the time, as a way to ease my nerves on the way home. I had briefly looked down at my phone when I heard a weird, screeching sound which caused me to look up. There to my horror was this large, tall, deathly frail looking humanoid creature, that looked very white and pale almost as if it was sickly. Before I could really get a good look at it, it dropped onto all fours and leapt into the wooded area. Seeing this I panicked and began to pedal as fast as I could, meanwhile I could hear the thing taking chase but remaining hidden in the woods, I could hear branches constantly snapping, leaves crunching, this thing was in pursuit. I got about halfway through the route, to a point where nature stops being trees and woods, and opens up into a rolling hill sort of thing, just flat grass but a bunch of hills. As soon as I got to this point, I heard the thing stop chasing me in complete silence, that's when I noticed a very peculiar scent. Blueberry pie which really weirded me out because there are no houses slash restaurants slash or buildings of any kind around this area so for the scent of a freshly baked blueberry pie, my favorite pie, really seemed sketchy. I paid no attention to it as to me it was coming from the distant hills as if this thing was somehow creating the scent to draw me away from the sidewalk and towards it. So I kept pedaling and eventually made it to where the townhomes were and eventually back home to safety. Which yes, yes I did throw my bike into the garage and run inside and up to my bedroom like a frightened child and turn on the light and TV now it doesn't end there, a few days later, Halloween, when I started forgetting about the thing I saw. I spent the day handing out candy for my aunt, and watching TV slash YouTube until it was time to retire to the bedroom. Shortly after I had gone to my room I again heard that weird screeching sound, and for some reason my idiot self decided to check out the window, and there about 40 to 50 feet away from dot the house standing underneath a few trees was the creature slash thingy, which made me quickly just close the window and shut the blinds. The next day surprisingly my aunt had asked me if I had heard the sound last night and saw the thing as well, I guess from what she had told me she had heard the noise and wanted to see what it was so she took the dog and went into the backyard and had seen the thing standing there then, almost immediately drop to all fours and leap away. Now when it comes to this thing's size it'd say when I saw it standing on 2 feet it was about 7 to 8 feet tall, im 6 feet 7 inches tall, so it was quite taller than me. It looked very pale, like it was nothing but skin and bones, yet moved incredibly fast from the speed it had leapt away and pursued me while I was biking home. I saw a creature in a back alley in 2017. This is going to sound really stupid, but no this day I have no idea what I saw. I have a few theories but I'm not sure. I had been working at this burrito place to a few years. It was in this big, almost abandoned shopping center in the middle of the city. It used to be full of thriving businesses, but since 2007 they've all gone out of business except for the burrito place and ice cream parlor that were right next to each other, and a Tuesday morning. A lot of homeless people sleep there, but other than that it's usually quiet. There were two entities in the burrito shop, one a mimic, the other a poltergeist, but they weren't scary and never showed themselves. My co-workers and I were used to them, and for the most part it was okay, but people looked at me sideways when this happened. It was after hours. I was working the night shift, like usual, and I was taking out the trash. 
When I pushed the cart outside and came around to the back alley, I saw something I couldn't explain. It was crouched down on all fours, about five feet across, by the door of the compactor slash dumpster. It had grayish tan skin, was thin, with its spine protruding, and it had a small, almond-shaped head. It gasped four limbs, as far as I could tell, but they were bent like spider legs. I didn't get good enough of a look at its feet. It either had two, long slits for eyes or they were closed. I didn't see a mouth or a nose. I immediately pushed the cart and ran back inside. I stood there a minute and thought that maybe my eyes were playing tricks or I'm just getting freaked out for no reason. After calming myself down I went back out there. The trash cart was still there and when I came around the corner, it was still there, motionless. I was so scared and confused that I ran again and told my manager what I saw and I needed her to see. OFC it was gone, and she thought I was making it up. What's weird to me is that it was just sitting there. It wasn't moving or making any sounds. I tried looking up what this could be, but I found nothing. Any ideas? It happened in Florida, on a trail. Has anybody seen any weird serpent-like creature slash animal near the Gulf Coast? I was walking down a preserve with my mom and dog. I stopped to give my dog water, was facing backwards when all of a sudden my mom asks who is that? And stops me with her arm. I of course turned, cause we're near the exit of the trail and the only person we saw was an old guy biking around. So curious, I quickly whip around. The second I do, this thing. I don't even know how to properly describe it. The closest thing I can think of in terms of shape is the Beetlejuice snake slash monster, but it most definitely was not a snake. This thing was a matte pitch black color and had almost a head-like shape, hence why my mom though it was a person, but no eyes, pores or anything I could discern. Mind you it was maybe 8 to 10 feet from us. As I face it and start to process what my eyes are seeing it noticed my movement and slithers in the air, I couldn't see if it was hanging in the air, or if it was on land, it came from the trees to our left. Its head, if you could call it that, again it had no eyes or mouth or anything, scanned me up and down and moved towards me a bit. It felt sentient although I don't know how it saw me or with what. Then it all of a sudden whips its body back towards the trees and disappeared. This preserve slash trail is surrounded by water, yet we heard no splash or any sounds. It was massive, we have no snakes like that here and again it was no snake. Impossible with how it moved. The body was too long and thick, also I don't know how it would support itself in the air, since all we saw was a massive floating serpent-like form. That was halfway across the width of the trail several feet up taller than me 5'4" and then it was gone in a flash. My dog, a pit bull, miraculously wasn't even paying attention. I have no clue what would have happened if he had spotted the thing. My mom wanted to head back the opposite direction of the trail, which is like three miles. But I told her screw that. We're at the end, our best bet is running past it then it's surprising us at any point for the rest of it. As we run past the spot we saw it my dog stops. I'm of course freaked but I have to look to make sure it doesn't jump at me and literally nothing is there. I have no idea where it went or how it did so silently with the size of the thing. If I hadn't been with my mom, I wouldn't believe myself. I'm literally shaking thinking about it. This has haunted us for so long. Please if you have any idea of what it might be let me know. This was formerly Calusa territory so I wonder if there's prehistoric information on this creature. Or if anybody else has seen it? Creepy creature in the back roads. Okay so I don't know if this is the right place to post but I need to know if anyone has ever seen this thing or had a similar experience. I live in a small city in Texas currently but I grew up in a small town about an hour and 30 minutes away. When I visit my family and go home afterwards I have two different roads I can take. 
One is through the highway the other which is slightly faster is through the back roads. The back road mainly consists of empty farm roads with nothing but windmills and farm land. Occasionally there are one or two cars but most of the time it's empty. That day I decided to go through the back roads, my roommate who had also come to visit her family was driving behind me in her truck. It was around 6 pm and the sun was about to set but not fully set, leaving the sky with an orangey hue. As we were driving through the back road I see something up ahead crouched next a bush. As I get closer I see that it's white and its skin looks leathery, its legs are extremely long. As I pass it, it jumps over my car onto a tree on the other side of the road. During this moment I don't react for some reason. I keep driving looking ahead with a blank face, it feels as if I'm in a trance. When the thing jumped over my car I was able to see how long its legs actually were. It jumped of the ground like a spring that was pushed down then let go. It had equally long arms and overall it basically looked like a tall large proportioned human. For some reason I could have also sworn I saw a hat on him. The best way I could describe it is like the white spy from Spy vs Spy. Picture that spy but with long arms and legs as well as a thin torso. Like I said I felt like I was in a trance I drove and drove with my friend behind me until we got to our apartment. The whole way my mind was blank for the life of me I can't explain how my mind and body felt. We got home and I had completely forgotten about it and neither my roommate or me brought it up. Until about two weeks later me and my roommate were drinking. For some reason she said something that instantly reminded me of that day. I looked at her and asked her do you remember that time we're driving in the back roads and that thing jumped over my car. She instantly remembered and told me she felt like after it happened she was lost in a trance as well. She described the thing exactly the way I pictured it, however from her point of view she definitely saw it a lot clearer. I still can't explain what exactly it was we saw and why we were in a trance after we saw it or why we completely forgot about it until that night. If anyone has any theories or maybe a logical explanation I would love to hear it. I sometimes stay awake at night thinking whatever it was might show up again and take me. I still drive down the same road hoping I might come across it again. I'm not afraid just so confused. Hi everyone. First time posting here, looking for some explanations as to what this may have been. About two or three years ago, I was with some friends in my car outside one of my friends houses. It was around 9 pm in winter time, so relatively dark out but clear weather. There were five of us in the car, myself and a friend in the passenger seat, as well as three friends sitting in the middle row. It's an SUV. We were talking about some random topic, when all of a sudden I felt an intense feeling go down my spine, like we were being watched. I turned to my friend in the passenger seat and he looked up at me at the same time like he had just seen a ghost. I asked him if he felt that too, and he said yes. None of my other friends in the back felt anything. We felt really strange, but ignored it and kept talking. A few minutes later, the feeling came back stronger than before, and once again my friend and I looked at each other at the same time. He looked right past me out the driver's side window, which my back was to, and told me not to turn around. None of my other friends saw anything, but he said there was something out there, and I felt some sort of presence behind me. We took turns describing to each other what we sensed it looked like, and we were for sure both seeing slash sensing the same thing. It was pure white and humanoid, but the details of what we sensed are fuzzy to me. Clearer descriptions later in the post. After a minute or so, it went away, and we were totally spooked. This is where it gets weirder. My friend and I both felt the presence making circles around the car, and we began to both see green glowing circles moving quickly around it. It's hard to explain, but we couldn't really see them, it was more knowing they were there. They began to move faster and we were freaking the hell out. Then all of a sudden they disappeared. Once again, we both saw slash felt these, but nobody in the back did. Then, 
passenger seat friend and I were leaning back to talk to the middle row, when all of a sudden on the sidewalk behind the car there was a flash of white light and a creature sprinting down towards us. It was pure white, bipedal, somewhat humanoid, and very tall and lanky. I'm going to guess it was probably 7 feet tall. It had a horse-shaped head, long black thin hair, black eyes, and claws. My friend and I in the front screamed simultaneously, started the car, and got the hell out of there. Once we were far, far away, we once again took turns describing to each other what we saw, and we were both on point with each other's descriptions. I took everyone home, then as I was driving home, I still felt the presence behind me. I couldn't tell if it was in the car or not, but whenever I got to a stop sign slash light, I felt it catching up, so I sped the rest of the way back. Once I got home, it was gone. Both my friend and I could sense that whatever it was wasn't there to kill us or anything, just to make its presence known. Nothing like it has happened before or since. The only relevant connecting factor between the passenger seat friend and I, that those in the back did not share, is that we were both Christian, at the time. Any ideas as to what we could have experienced? I can get in touch with the passenger seat friend if needed for extra info. Thanks everyone. Me and my girlfriend were down a dirt road surrounded by woods, as you do. Then as I was doing a multi-point turn to leave I noticed something in the bush. I stopped and looked looked closer through my side mirror and seen two white hands with three long skinny claw-like fingers, on them slowly pulling the bushes apart. I didn't stick around to see whatever they were attached to. So once we got out of there and found a place to park my girlfriend called her brother, he's really into cryptids, and he said it sounded like a skinwalker. So I'm posting here for any thoughts on what I seen. Any feedback would be great, thanks Reddit. Edit, so me, my girlfriend, her brother, and her brother's friend went back to the spot I seen the thing too. And when we pulled up the hill to the spot we noticed fog rolled in. Only in that area, not on the way up, not anywhere else in the area, just in the spot I seen it. Then I turned around again, just like first time and we decided to turn the car off crack a window and listen for anything. After not hearing anything I went to start my car. And nothing. My car wouldn't start. I tried again. Nothing. On the third try I got it to start and shifted to drive and sped away. I don't know why my car wouldn't start. I know I drive a shitbox. But it's never done that before. Strange Sounds Hello all. I'm from the Northeast Ohio area and for the past year have been working and living in Pennsylvania doing work with COVID. Typically I'm in a new city in a new hotel every week. I've been all over the state, typically driving 100 to 300 miles a day through winding mountain roads. Pennsylvania can be a strange place at night, especially with a lack of street lighting on many roads. On one occasion while driving down a back road through central PA, a giant dog hopped the guardrail and ran in front of my truck. On all fours, its head was at the hood of my truck. A 2020 Dodge 2500, the hood of the truck is 6 feet from the ground. It made prolonged eye contact with me with sharp piercing yellow eyes as it crossed the road, and continued into the woods. Flash forward to now, I'm in the Philadelphia area. The area my hotel occupies is newly developed, so the parking lot of the hotel is well lit but the surrounding area is wooded and dark. I'm often awake until early morning hours and keep my blinds open. The other night, I was looking out the window and saw an odd white shape in the parking lot. It was absolutely featureless from what I could tell, kind of like a blob with thick short legs. I was so shocked I did a double take and it was gone. Tonight about 30 minutes ago, I was laying in bed watching TV. Window open blinds up. I heard this odd noise. The only way I can describe it is it sounded like a baby's cry, but muffled and raspy, 
and it sounded like it was being carried away as if a strong gust of wind was blowing it out of your shot. I heard it three times and saw nothing out of my window. But I have never heard a sound like that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.